Hey everybody, welcome! You're watching IGN FanFest 2024, a celebration of all things pop culture. But coming up, we're going to focus exclusively on a whole bunch of video games. What sort of video games? All kinds of video games. Whether you're interested in games about catching fish, or getting abducted by aliens, or power washing stuff, or just, you know, committing murder, we've got you covered. Speaking of committing murder, here's a look at what good old Agent 47 is up to next in Hitman World of Assassination. I'll give you a hint, it involves assassination. Take a look. Your target is Mark Faber, also known as The Undying, a disgraced former MI5 operative currently working as a freelance assassin. Faber has been confirmed killed by ICA agents more than a dozen times. On every occasion, he has managed to come back from the dead. To be entirely honest, this one's a bit of an embarrassment. Please make sure he doesn't come back again. Not only is Akira Toriyama the creator of Dragon Ball, but he is a prolific manga writer, creating over 40 manga series. One such series was Sandland, a manga about a desert world inhabited by survivors looking for water. Think Mad Max by way of Dragon Ball. For reasons that still aren't super clear to me, though you'll hear no objections, Sandland is back in a big way. Not only is an anime adaptation premiering later this year, but Bandai Namco is getting ready to release a full Sandland video game, and IGN got a chance to play an exclusive preview for FanFest, and found a delightful throwback to a bygone era of anime game, with extra enjoyment for longtime Toriyama fans. One aspect of Toriyama's game that often goes unheralded is his brilliance as a designer. One look at his steampunky, circular car and airplane designs and you know instantly who drew them. Vehicle design is clearly a passion for Toriyama, having drawn everything from hovercrafts, airplanes, spaceships, to Toriyama-fied cars. His trademark machines have appeared in every one of his series, from Dragon Ball to Dr. Slump. Sandland finally put me in the cockpit of these wonderful vehicles, and it was a dream come true. My hands-on preview began with our hero, Beelzebub, in need of the right vehicle, a recurring element in my preview, to get across some quicksand. To do so, he enlists the help of a new character, a brilliant mechanic named Anne, who says she can get Beelzebub and the crew across quicksand on her bike. Unfortunately, she lost her bike during a chase, and now the gang has to go and retrieve it in an area called Talbo. Sandland is at its heart an open-world adventure game about Beelzebub and all the cool vehicles he can pilot. The main mode of transportation is a customizable tank that can traverse the stands and blast away enemies. And yes, it utilizes classic tank controls for that extra hit of nostalgia. But as we learn while trying to retrieve Anne's bike, Beelzebub can swap between several different vehicles in an instant. Once we discover that some flying creature have stolen Anne's bike and taken it to their lair up in the mountains, we switch to Jumpbot, a walker with the ability to, well, jump. Whereas the tank is meant to be a sort of slow but all-purpose vehicle designed for combat, the jump bot is specifically designed for the kind of platforming areas I saw in Talbo. The jump bot can leap vertically to scale the tall mountain, as well as hop over some tricky ledges. Once we reach the monster's lair, it's back to the tank to blast away at the flying creature. Maneuvering around while firing the tank's cannon takes a bit of a learning curve. Though my preview started partway through the game, you might be spared said learning curve through a tutorial and or the practice gained in the early part of the game. Nevertheless, the controls are intuitive enough for anyone who grew up playing old PlayStation games, so taking down the flying monster was no problem. The second part of my preview was where the vehicle customization truly shined. As you get further into Sandland, Anne's workshop will open up, allowing you to fully customize not only your tank, but a variety of other vehicles Beelzebub has access to in Sandland. Focusing primarily on my tank, I was able to pick and choose different weapons, sub-weapons, threads, and other kinds of accessories to build my personal Sandland destruction machine. I mostly went with Aesthetic this time, but I did opt for a rocket launcher weapon that I got to try out later in my demo to great effect. But customization doesn't stop there. Because once you have your loadout picked out, you can go next door to give your ride a custom paint job with a variety of colors and decals to choose from. Like I said, 
If you're a fan of Toriyama's unique vehicle designs, Sandland will let you fully geek out. The second half of the demo was dedicated to some of the side activities Beelzebub can take on. There are side missions where Beelzebub can accept bounties on some high-profile targets. More on that in a bit. As well as races where you can take your newly customized ride for a true test. With three different race difficulties to choose from, each changing the course in some way, you can test your ride against enemy riders and time itself. There are other side activities Beelzebub can take on in Sandland, one of which is accepting bounties for tough enemies roaming the desert. I took my newly customized tank out to try and nab some of these bad guys and found that my new missile launcher equipped tank was more than enough to take on some of these bad guys in the blink of an eye. One final note is that even with my limited hands on time, Sandland is shaping up to be massive. If it weren't for some of the time constraints, I wouldn't have used the fast travel feature to get from place to place, and instead, I would have loved to have taken my sweet time to take in the sights. Alas, that'll have to wait until I get my hands on the full game. Sandland's Transmedia Returns is a true surprise so far. Honestly, I haven't thought about it since reading it in a copy of Shonen Jump over 20 years ago. And here it is in a brand new game, and even a new anime. For fans of classic PS2 era anime games, there's a lot to be excited about in Sandland, even without knowing anything about the series. However, Sandland really feels like a love letter to Akira Toriyama fans. I'm talking about the Dr. Slump and early Dragon Ball fans. There are dozens of amazing Dragon Ball games you can play right now. But if you're a classic manga fan and someone who's loved the Toriyama art style and world building, be sure to check out Sandland when it hits consoles and PC on April 26. That's been our exclusive preview of Sandland for IGN FanFest. For more from this week's show, check out IGN. That was a look at Sandland right here on IGN FanFest 2024. That game is based on a manga by Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama. Sandland manga is great, but it's also really short. The entire series can be collected in one volume. Apparently Toriyama was planning on making a series involving a tank, but then quickly realized how hard it is to draw tanks and just kind of called it quits. Seriously, that's not a joke. You can look it up. Anyway, our next game also has a major emphasis on tanks of a different kind. Here's a look at something very big that's about to make a splash in Dave the Diver. Let's jump ahead a little bit, shall we, and see what our friends Jot and Thrash are up to in their quest to cause a little trouble for mean old hunger. Ah, so our heroes have made it to the mountainside, a bit further than I expected, perhaps. And it seems our bunny friends know where Jot and Thrash can get a pass inside. But it might take a bit of adventuring to find it. There you go, Jot. He seems to have found it and found a bit of trouble as well. Ah. 
Well, this is a bit of a mess, isn't it? Time to use your smarts and work out the problem a little bit at a time. Oftentimes, the solution just slides right into place. Success! It looks like Jot and Thrash were triumphant once again and continue their quest ahead. But who knows what's on the next page for The Plucky Squire. Hello. We made a game together with our friends and it's called Harold Halibut. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, how are you, uh... Um, I'm Harold Halibut, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you are. Harold Halibut is a narrative game about life and friendship on a city-sized spaceship that crash-landed on an alien water planet. You help your scientist boss, Jean Marot, to figure out how to find a new, drier home. The game begins with Harold's mundane day-to-day, -day, but mysterious events and a fateful encounter lead down a rabbit hole to a psychedelic new realm. What part does the dubious Allwater Corporation play in all of it? Who are the mysterious light keepers? And why the tube fares keep going up? Explore away from the start and get around by a water slide tube system which connects the different districts of the Fedora One. You are able to openly travel between the various parts of the station. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. Ah, thanks, Professor. You can keep track of the tasks and messages you get from other characters on a wonky handheld computer. It comes bundled with a notebook where Harold recaps the story in the form of crude little drawings. It was important for us to not only focus on the increasingly exciting main storyline, but to create a world full of interesting events and meaningful encounters. Woven into the narrative, you'll find playful interactions like playing music to space bacteria, fixing a broken 3D printer, or having a party! We made everything in the game by hand, sculpted from clay, carved from wood, painted with paint. But then we 3D scan it all. And in the end, you can walk around as Harold and hang out with the inhabitants of the Fedora One. It's been more than 10 years since we started this project and we can't wait to finally release it within the next couple of months. You can already play a demo of the game and wishlist it on Steam. Thank you. That was a look at Harold Halibut, a handcrafted stop-motion game that's been in the works for over a decade. But hey, clay ages well. I mean, the kind that they use for stop-motion does. A lot of clay gets really hard and people use it to make pots and ashtrays and stuff like that. Anyway, speaking of stuff that ages well, here's a look at a couple classics from the 8 and 16-bit era that are getting some re-releases courtesy of Konami. Take a look.
I've been lucky that so far in my career, I've always managed to work on stuff that I want to do. I want to make an experience which is just makes you smile, which you know, gives you that buzz, which just makes you feel good. Jeff is one of the true originals in gaming. Like, there's no one else like him. The first time I loaded up Revenge of the Mutant Camels, and I was like, what the hell is this? Am I being chased by an umbrella? Everyone else was just a company or product, and Jeff was Jeff. What he makes is him. I remember lying in my bedroom in the dark and listening to Pink Floyd. And in my head, I would imagine like sort of abstract geometric shapes. And so I came up with this like 1K program, which I, I called Psychedelia. Does this work? I think it works. Maybe people don't agree with me, but at least I tried. Tempest 2000, that was the flagship game. That was the killer app. He's an artist that just gets more and more powerful. You know, I want to enjoy what I do. I want to feel happy with the things that I've made, and I want to make things that I want to play with. Those are a couple of actual throwbacks, some Konami classics, and a collection of work from the prolific English game dev Jeff Minter. Up next, we've got a game that seems retro, but isn't. It's a brand new game based on the retro-futuristic cult classic 2015 film Turbo Kid. Take a look. Witness. Imperial engines adorned in filth. A testament to their glory. Yet the machine spirits yearn for reawakening, shaped in the likeness of the Omnissiah. Purity. It is an honor to service these triumphant vessels. Our tool, the Mark II Aquasantica Arquibus. Our adversary, Dirt. An act performed in dutiful veneration of the Omnissiah carries glory, whether by power armor or power washer. Yes, the canticles of restoration must be performed. Our purpose is true. Purge the unclean. Where is that servitor with my blessed incense? You know, I think we need a power wash simulator prequel where you try every means of cleaning possible before hiring the power washing company. You start out with like a wet paper towel, you work your way up to a Brillo pad, maybe you get like magic eraser DLC. 
Actually, I think at that point you're probably just better off cleaning your house for real. And video games are supposed to be about escapism. Speaking of which, next up we got a look at an action RPG that lets you escape to a fantastical open world to wage war against an army of the undead. Here is Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. Escape for you. Is it me, or do those statues look like you? They were probably inspired by one of my visits. I traveled to the above when the Great Below got too much to bear. Welcome to Wild Bastards, an upcoming strategy shooter with multiple layers of gameplay. I'm Dean from Blue Manchu, and I'm going to give you a first look at a typical gameplay session of Wild Bastards. So let's go with Preach, Rawhide, and Billy. Locked and loaded. Here we are on the planet, and we can see that Rawhide isn't that far off. But we also need to think about the loot that we can gather while we're down here. The key to combat in Wild Bastards is actually the ability to swap between your outlaws during the showdown. You can see I have started as Billy, but when I need to, I can swap to Preach to utilize their weapon and stunt. Let's take out that barrel. Less cover will make it harder for them to get the drop on me. This game features an array of mods and pickups to help during combat including this invulnerability pickup I grabbed earlier. Invulnerability is really helping me clear out the stronghold, getting in and flushing them out since they were all hunkered down behind cover when I approached. The planets we visit in Wild Bastards feature day-night cycles, so now I get to make the most of the cover of darkness. This shielded enemy is a yellow belly. Luckily, my other outlaw, Rawhide, has a sonic rifle that can shoot right through. Since it is night, spotting enemies will be harder. Yo, Kate, yes, sir. It's well high. Luckily, my helpful coyotes are going to help go after these enemies. That is, if I don't shoot them too. It's there. It's there. Another yellow belly, so Rawhide's turn. Great. So here's some juice I can use for my outlaw's stunt. This is a unique ability each outlaw has. For Rawhide, I get more coyote allies. Time to go up and hopefully catch them by surprise. Hey, man! Outlawed rounds. So these are a seriously good mod. I like the idea of burst on Preacher's Gatling gun, so let's give her the rounds. No one got injured, but all three of our outlaws are tired. That means I'm going to try and rest them for the next planet. A great haul of loot though. Let's unpack these aces now. So, 
Billy's leveled up and I can choose between more damage, more ammo, or a cloud of ink. There's a lot more to this game to show, so please follow us on social media or join our Discord to find out more. Thanks so much for watching. That was a look at Wild Bastards, which certainly looks wild, though I can't personally speak to the lineage or character of its protagonist. If that wasn't wild enough for you, well, good news, we've got an even wilder, longer, and less legitimate trailer up on YouTube and IGN. Up next, a psychedelic candy-coated indie shooter running on Unreal 5. Have a look. You are no longer an individual of flesh and blood. You are to be a front line for the revolution. And that, dear viewers, was Dome King Cabbage, a trip-hop infused visual novel about a cloud person having an existential crisis on their way to a job interview because they realize they're living in a monster collecting JRPG. And really, I think we can all relate. As much as it pains me to say so, it is time for me to go away. But don't worry, because there's still plenty more fan fest to come. And as a parting gift, I have two more trailers for you. Forever Winter, a horribly depressing thing to think about in mid-February, but a pretty cool looking video game. And then arguably our most controversial game of fan fest, the newest addition to the Contra universe. Controversial, Operation Galuga. Take a look.
seen super soldiers in a doomsday weapon. Hell of a Friday. Ah, we meet at last. Aliens? What the hell? Hey, boy, looks like a dead end! 